Teen Gamer here, and you already know the drill. If you watch this channel long enough, uh, you already know. 5.0 Spiral Abyss. Let's just get this over with.
Time's up. Fine, so.
turn for the better. Time to oblivion! And that is it for the 5.0 Spiral Abyss. So in general, I guess it's not that bad of a Spiral Abyss. It is still pretty hard, but um, if you guys have at least like some good teams or some good characters built, I'm pretty sure it'll be a, well, at least a manageable Abyss. Uh, well, uh, I can't explain it here because well, the enemies aren't on the screen, so might as well do it here. So this is the segment where I just talk about my strategy on um, the Spiral Abyss, aka Floor 11 and Floor 12, because I don't do the commentary versions of uh, the Spiral Abyss videos anymore, and that's because I do ZZZ content now. So yeah. Well, anyways, um, as for Floor 11, uh, Floor 11 isn't that bad. The only hard floor in this um, Abyss is definitely this. Yeah, the crocodile. Remember this thing from Sumeru? Yeah. Um, these things are tough. <laughs> these things love to attack a lot. They relentlessly attack. You know the drill. If you have fought these things before in Sumeru, you know how much of a threat these are. Same with the Mirror Maidens. If you haven't fought the Mirror Maidens before, they love to teleport a lot, which means it wastes time. And you know what's valuable in Spiral Abyss? Time. So yeah, um, well, I guess the only the only threatening floor is Chamber 2 because Chamber 3 is not really that bad because really the only threat for Chamber 3 is this girl or guy. Um, I'm pretty sure it's a trap, but um, uh, this enemy, I'll just say that, uh, this enemy is, uh, well, there's only one of them. Yeah, you heard me right. There's only one of them. So that means that... You could literally just bring like someone like Mulani for this instance and it'll probably like be done. You're just done. So yeah. Um, but for, uh, well, I guess I could just discuss the strategies here. So in chamber one, it's a monolith floor. So you just bring animal support or crowd control. So Kazuha, Venti, etc. for the first half. Second half is just single target enemies. So they spawn one at a time. So I think it's two ruin guards. So yeah, um, it shouldn't be that bad, really, for Chamber 1. Because Floor 11 is pretty easy if you have at least some of these uh, characters decently built. So yeah, Chamber 2 is not really that bad either. Um, the only uh, enemies that I would say that will probably give you trouble are the Spectres. And that's because they're immune to specific types. Um, more specifically, their main type um, for Electro... Spectre, of course, Electro, etc, etc. So you basically want to bring any character that isn't any of these types and you should be fine, really. Um, it's not really that bad. Um, usually in Floor 11, there's not really that much tough enemies, so yeah. Um, second half, the only thing you gotta worry about is the crocodile because this thing loves to attack a lot. So be wary that this thing will pounce and will try to relentlessly attack you as much as possible. So, uh... Be prepared for that. As for Chamber 3, uh, it's not really that bad either. Um, the Avatar Lava is, well, pretty easy. Um, these uh, these enemies are also pretty uh, easy too, the Warriors. Um, same with this. This was pretty easy too. The only thing that will probably worry you about um, it with this enemy is that one attack where the enemy literally rides on like a surfboard i think it, i think they just ride on their guitar and then they do like hydro damage to you so yeah th that's a pretty annoying attack that they do but um other than that it, it should be good 
uh, this this floor it doesn't really give that much trouble to basically anyone really if you have a decent team so yeah but what floor does give trouble to other players is floor 12 because that is the hardest floor in spiral abyss so let's talk about it so chamber one um the reason why I can't use Mulani, by the way, for this floor is because there's no single target enemies. Yeah, you heard me right. There's no single target enemies. Mulani excels at damaging single target enemies. If she is doing AoE, aka tagging every single enemy, the shark's missiles, aka those like little things that she shoots after she does the big shark bite, they literally do like 33% of her damage, which is not enough for this type of um, abyss. So yeah, Mulani can't shine in this abyss, which sucks. But, um, so that is why I just ran another team instead. Uh, you'll, you'll see what I mean once we get to the uh, team builds that I have. But uh, for the first half, here is Chamber 1. Um, the only things you gotta worry about is the Fatui's. Yep, the Fatui enemies, baby. They are really annoying. Um, specifically the Pyro Slinger. Because that thing will immediately, and I mean immediately, go into its shield state. You have to bring Hydro. You have to 100% bring Hydro to this fight. Same with the Cryo Gunner. Because he loves to put up the Cryo Shield. So 100% bring an Electro or Pyro character. So th this means that your team locked. Yeah, your team locked on chamber one. So you have to bring a pyro or a uh, pyro and electro. Pyro, electro, hydro, basically anything. Electro is universal to both of these because they do take down shields. So you can't just bring one electro character to just um, free up slots in your team. But I would say bring their actual effective type so you can finish this chamber faster. The more... Um, or like the more time you have for the second half if you do beat this first half with a lot of time remaining. So yeah. So in general, you just want to bring their weaknesses basically. And second half, you're also team locked too because of this thing. The phantasms. If you fought these things before in Fontaine, you know how annoying these are. These things appear in, of course, the Fontaine Spiral Abyss as well. They love to appear a lot ever since their first debut. These things are tanky as crap. And they are not fun to fight because they don't get staggered. So yeah, they, they love to pelt you with hydro projectiles. They love to shoot you with hydro beams. Yeah, it's not fun. <laughs> it's, it is really not fun. So you want to bring an Electro, Pyro, or Cryo character. Basically anything that can affect Hydro. And that thing should probably at least die in like 30 seconds maybe if you have like a decently built team but um the main threat of course is the phantasms the lore master could be a threat too but um of course it summons its persona you just have to kill the persona and then it becomes vulnerable and then they die quickly so yeah and as for the Dr ruin drakes they're not really that bad unless they fly in the air but most of the time they will stick to the ground so yeah um these are pretty easy. The only threat you have to worry about, of course, as I said before, is the phantasms. So you just have to bring a type that effectively deals uh, with hydro. So yeah. For chamber two, it's also a pretty easy floor, I would say. Um, the first half is just mushrooms. These mushrooms are just there to build up your uh, burst meter. And then Jade Plume Terror Shroom is the boss. You know how many times this thing has appeared in abysses? I swear, I guess... I guess Hoyle just loves Jade Plume Terror Shroom, I guess, because they love to bring this thing back every single abyss. I don't know why, but they love to bring back the Jade Plume Terror Shroom. But, um, well, I guess I could explain how to deal with the Jade Plume Terror Shroom, um, if you guys haven't fought this thing before, which I highly doubt, um, that you never fought this thing, because this thing, uh, well, has put- has been put in abysses for so long. Uh, yeah. So, there's two ways to deal with the Jade Plume Terror Shroom. One, you bring Electro. If you bring Electro, it'll basically charge up and then it'll go into an overdrive state. Once it is finished with its overdrive state, it'll basically become um, immobilized. Yeah, which means that uh, it'll just uh, be vulnerable. So once it basically goes into overdrive and then it's done with its overdrive 
phase, it'll just plop to the ground um, and it'll be vulnerable and you could do damage to it. So yeah, um, that is the first way to deal with the Jade Plume Terror Shroom. The second way is if you use Pyro. In Pyro state, Jade Plume Terror Shroom, um, it'll become less effective and it'll just do different attacks. Really, it just means that it won't go into overdrive state and it won't go like crazy uh, at all. It'll mostly stay in place for the most part. So yeah, there is two ways to deal with this. One, Electro so it could go into overdrive or two, go Pyro so it doesn't do anything. So yeah, there's literally two ways to deal with this thing and both of them are extremely effective. So, uh, well, pick and choose. You could bring an Electro centered team or a Pyro centered team and you should be performing fine with the Jade Plume Terror Shroom. And as for the second half, you have the Bagu Kenki and the Black Serpent Knight. The Black Serpent Knight, um, make sure you know you don't bring a shield character because you don't want it to activate its mechanics. Yeah, you definitely don't want to do that because if it hits you with the shield, it gets its buffs. You don't want that. So yeah, don't bring a shielder unless it's like Baiju or something who gets rid of his shields every time. So yeah, um, just make sure it doesn't hit your shield and you should be fine. As for the Mongu Kenki, this thing has been in Spiral Business for so long. Uh, there's really nothing for me to say other than it's just the Mongu Kenki. If you haven't fought this thing in Inazuma, then uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> but uh, Mongu Kenki is also pretty easy. He has two phases. The first phase, of course, it's like 25% of his health. You just deal with that. And then it goes into its second phase where it splits into clones. After you do that, you just finish it off and that's basically it. Yep, that is the Mangu Kenki in a nutshell. And well, you fought this thing before like so many times. I fought this thing before so many times. So yeah, it's just a pretty easy boss in general. So yeah. And as for Chamber 3, we got a new enemy right here. The Mountain King. Yes, he has been teased. Um, the Mountain King in story before and he's right here. Yeah, so the Mountain King is pretty unique to fight um, First of all the main recommended type that you have to bring for this fight is pyro Yeah, it's pyro because it spits out seeds if you Damage the seeds with pyro attacks and it gulps down the seeds that are affected by pyro it gets stunned Yeah, that's literally how you beat him Either that, or you DPS your way through it. Yep, you could literally just ignore all of its mechanics and do as much damage as you can. You can go Oonga Boonga mode, and then it'll probably die in like like 30 seconds. Yeah, that's how easy this boss is. Because it doesn't move around that much. The only time it moves around, I would say, are like a couple of his moves, is when he does the Beyblade attack where he spins around. That does a lot of damage, by the way, so you might want to avoid that. Or... It does a swing move and then it does like a ground pound but um other than those two moves it's literally a sitting duck yeah it's a sitting duck it's a literal punching bag it's a sandbag yeah so just bring your best team and like go go ham on it as for the second half we have perpetual mechanical array yes this thing is back and if you fought this thing in inazuma before it should be pretty easy just like the monku kenki it's literally the reverse so instead of having 25% health as the first uh, phase, he has 75% health as the first phase. So in his first phase, he loves to spam attacks, of course. You can whittle it down. Once it reaches down to 25% or around a certain HP threshold, or if a certain amount of time has passed, it goes into its second phase where it splits into four parts. Uh, or if you don't, unless you count the main body, then five, I guess. But mainly, it splits around to four parts and then it protects its core. So once it does that, you have to deal damage to the glowing part, aka the one with all the sigils around it. So once you deal with that, it becomes stunned. And after that, you just kill the core and then it's done. Yep, literally easy. So in general, um, this floor is kind of difficult if you don't know what you are using or if you don't know what you're stepping into because there are some tough enemies right here like the pyro slinger and the cryo gunners these guys have a ton of hp yeah these guys have a ton of hp phantasms are pretty annoying too if you don't know how to deal with the lore master she could be pretty annoying as well chamber two um is probably like the easiest chamber ever in this floor and as for chamber three 
Um, it's also kind of pretty easy unless um, you haven't fought the Mountain King before because the Mountain King's mechanics are pretty unique. Um, and probably um, some of you guys don't haven't fought the Mountain King because the Mountain King's um, level up materials are from um, specifically for uh, Kachina. So yeah, if you haven't leveled up Kachina yet, then you probably haven't uh, beaten the Mountain King yet. So yeah, but um, there is my advice for Chamber um, for Chamber Three, Chamber Two, and Chamber One for Floor Twelve. Um, I will summarize it again for you guys if you um, if you want. So first half, just bring uh, Electro, Pyro, or Hydro. Second half, bring Electro, Pyro, or Cryo, or anything that. Um, can affect Hydro like Dendro. Dendro is probably your best bet. For Chamber 2, Jade Plume, Terra Shroom, bring Electro or Pyro. For second half, you bring whatever you want. Just don't bring a Shielder because of the Black Serpent Knight. And for Chamber 3, bring Pyro for its mechanics because it is involved around Pyro. Once it gulps down the seeds, it becomes um, stunned. For second half, bring whatever you want because it literally has no weaknesses. So yeah. But there it is. There is... Um, all the uh, floors and chambers explained right there. So all I'm going to say to you guys is good luck with your runs. So yeah, I gave you my advice. So put that into practice. But um, anyways, um, now it's time to talk about the teams I used for this Spiral Abyss. And it is a pretty, pretty interesting team right here. And by interesting, I mean I finally got to use one of my characters again. But um, well, anyways, without any further ado, let's just talk about... Um, the teams I use. So, of course, the first half, we have the fourth of the Fatui Harbingers, Arlene Kino. So, Arlene Kino hasn't changed that much. I'm still trying to get her build, um, her specifically, her uh, Bond of Life build, but I don't have that because you know how domains are. You can't get artifacts you want. It's just pretty, pretty annoying. But as you see here, we have crit, crit, crit damage. She has pyro damage bonus, of course, because she's a pyro DPS. As for weapon, I have Crimson Moon Semblance. This is definitely her best weapon. Gives her bond of life, gives her more damage based on bond of life. It's literally her weapon. Um, as for a free to play weapon, you could probably run, you can run Deathmatch, I guess, because it is a BP weapon. Um, if you don't have a uh, BP, then you can just run any other crit damage um, pull arm. Like the uh, Black Cliff. Black Cliff is also pretty good too. So yeah, um, there are many options you could use for uh, Arlen Kino. But her main weapon, of course, is Crimson Moon Semblance. And now, since weapon banners aren't uh, scams anymore, you could probably pull for this too once Arlen Kino gets her rerun. As for artifact set, I mentioned before, she has gladiators. Yep, she doesn't have the four-piece Bond of Life set yet. And that's because, again, domain artifact drops they suck as for constellations i have her at c1 c1 is pretty good if you want to run her on any other team that doesn't involve zhongli but i still have to run zhongli and that's because arlen kino takes way too much damage because she doesn't have this yeah her c2 literally gives her elemental res and physical res by 20 percent which also stacks well with her talent right here which also gives her another um 20 percent res for each um, damage. So yeah, that means she gets 40% res on all damage, elemental and physical. So yeah, um, that is my future goal to getting Arlen Kino, but C1 literally gives her interruption resistance. It's super, super good. So yeah. And as for talents, of course, 1066. Both of these are literally just tools to get her to um, the Bond of Life state so she's able to do Pyro normal attacks. That's literally um, what these two are, which is why I didn't level these up. So yeah. But there you go. There is Arlen Kino. Um, still uh, the best Pyro character in the game, um, probably, uh, because she shares a spot with Hu Tao, in my opinion. But both of these characters are really, really good. I would say Arlen Kino um, is probably going to get better over time because of, well, Natlin. Natlin is all about the pyro. So yeah. And next up, we have the best shielder in the game, uh, Mr. Zhongli of the uh, Wangshang Funeral Parlor. So yeah. But um, Zhongli, um, I build him as a hybrid. As you see here, he has 50,000 HP. He has crit, crit, crit damage. Yep, he is literally a hybrid. Um, he has no geo damage, of course, because I gave him all HP percent um, artifacts. So yeah. As for his best weapon, 
Black Tassel. Yep, Black Tassel is his best weapon because it literally gives him HP percent. That's literally the only reason why you want to run Black Tassel. But um, if you want to give him more damage, you can run Staff of Homa. Yes, Staff of Homa works on Zhongli if you want to give him a premium build. But as for his best weapon, it's literally a free-to-play three-star weapon. So yeah. As for artifact set, I have Tenacity of the Millilith. This is definitely his best artifact set ever. And that's because, of course, when you use shield, you get more shield strength, you get more attack for party members. Yeah, it's literally a support build for Zhongli. As for constellations, I have him at C0. He doesn't really need constellations to be good, so that's why I don't give him constellations. And as for talent, 6106. Yep, this is the only thing I leveled up to crown. So yeah. Well, anyways, there is Zhang Li. Um, pretty, pretty good. Uh, best shielder in the game still. Um, probably will never be dethroned and will never age. So yeah. And next up, we have the gambler or the secret agent of the Ministry of Civil Affairs. Yaylon. Yep, Yaylon. Um, still one of the best hard show characters in the game. So yeah. Um, as you see here, she has max HP to spare. She also has crit rate, crit damage, ER, hydro damage, the typical um stats you see on a sub DPS Yaylon. As for weapon, I have Aqua Simulacra at rank level three. Yes, R3. If you haven't seen the Emily summoning video, watch it. So yeah, but Aqua Simulacra is definitely her best weapon. As for her best free-to-play weapon, the Stringless. Because it literally gives her more EM, Elemental Mastery, as well as give her more damage. So yeah. As for Artifact Set, I have Emblem of Severed Fate. This is 100% her best Artifact Set because her uh, kit is all about the Elemental Burst damage. And guess what Emblem of Severed Fate gives her? Elemental burst damage. Yep, a literal no-brainer. As for constellations, I have her at C0. She doesn't really need constellations to be good, just like any other character. So yeah, um, you don't really need constellations. And as for talents, 6, 7, 10. Yes, this is the only thing I leveled up because both of these are literally just getting her um, stuff in. For mainly her normal attack, charge attack, you're probably never going to use it even though it does a, like a bajillion damage. I only used it once in this abyss. But um, it is there if you want to pitch on hydro damage. As for her elemental skill, it's not really that good. Um, the only thing you probably would use it for is to tag multiple enemies to prop them up or you just get uh, energy back for your burst. So yeah. Well anyways, there is Yaylon, still one of the best hydro sub DPSs in the game. Um, that will never change because she's probably never gonna age, just like Xingqiu. And last but not least, in the first half, we have our boy of Benny's adventure team, Bennett, the GOAT. Yes, the GOAT. So, Bennett still hasn't changed. Uh, 30k HP, energy recharge. We have, I think, healing bonus right here. Yeah, healing bonus. Um, your typical Bennett build, really. As for weapon, I gave him Skyward Blade. This is obviously his best weapon because it is an all-around great weapon for him because it gives him ER and base attack. If you want to give him the max amount of base attack ever, you have to give him the uh you have to give him the Aquilia Pavonia or any other weapon that gives him high attack. Because high attack means that he's able to give more attack to party members because he scales off of base attack, not attack percent, base attack. Like, literally, his base attack kit. So, you basically want to level him up to level 90 to get the max amount of base attack. And then you just give him Skyward Blade. Uh, so, yeah. But, um... Literally, just give him whatever you want. You can even give him Favonia Sword, even though it doesn't have high base attack. It'll still perform really well because he's all about the elemental burst. So, yeah. As for Artifact Set, no Bleece for Peace is obviously his best set. Because it literally gives attack to all party members. And guess what his burst does? It gives attack, so it stacks. As for constellations, I give him at C6. C6 Bennett now is actually pretty good investment now because it literally gives pyro damage to all your party members. Yep, and pyro damage bonus, by the way, on top of that, which means that Arlen Kino's just gonna pop off. Arlen Kino, Hu Tao, anyone who uses pyro is gonna pop off. So yeah. And as for talents, 6, 9, 13. Yes, this is crowned. 
Um, as for the, uh, well, the other things, so they're not really that important, but the burst really is important because the more your level, uh, burst is, the higher your attack buff is. So, yeah. But there is, uh, Bennett, uh, the GOAT of all time, the best, uh, the best support in the game, in my opinion, and he's a four-star. He's a literal four-star, and he's one of the best supports in the game. Yep. Uh, <laughs> uh, nothing to be said right there. Well, anyways, um, that is the first half team. Now it's time to go over the second half team. And as for the second half, we have a character that I haven't used in a very long time. Raiden Shogun. Yes. Um, I don't use her that much because I just use uh, Arlene Kino Nouvellet now. But uh, Raiden is still pretty good to this day. I still think that she is the best Electro DPS in the game. So, yeah. Um... As you see here, she has crit rate, crit damage to spare, high ER, electro damage. This is literally like uh, one of like the top Raiden builds ever. Um, so yeah. As for the weapon, I have Engulfing Lightning, uh, which is definitely her best pull arm. As for the best free to play pull arm, you can run the catch. Uh, all you have to do is fish, and um, all you have to do is fish, and that's basically it. If you can't get the catch. Then I guess you could just run any other pole arm, but the catch is definitely her best free to play weapon, so just give her that. As for artifact set, I have four piece emblem of severed fate, obviously her best set. Literally all her elemental burst damage is her DPS, so you could just do that. She also gives um, a lot of energy back to herself because the higher ER you have, the more electro damage you do. So yeah, um, it's pretty pretty good uh, artifact set, definitely her best. As for constellations, I have at C2. C2 Raiden is basically the most OP thing that you'll probably ever see because it literally ignores 60% defense. Yep, her burst literally ignores 60% defense. It's not broken. Also, she gets all of her um, maximum buffs on burst as well. So that's pretty great as well. Um, I would say that if you do run Raiden as a sub DPS or support, C2 is not necessary. Yep. Uh, if you just run her on an off-field team, or if you just run her without having her be the main DPS, then yes, you don't need C2. But if you are running a DPS Raiden, she can work at C0, but um, the most recommended uh, constellation is C2, because that is where she does the most damage. So yeah. And as for talents, 10, 10, 10. Yes, I main Raiden Shogun. Uh, of course, I have the triple crowner. So yeah. But there you go, that is it. There is Raiden Shogun. Um, I still think that she is the best Electro DPS in the game. Um, you probably already saw the numbers on the uh, Spiral Abyss run that I did. So yeah, numbers don't lie, right? <laughs> so yeah. Um, next up, we have the best Dendro character in the game and also one of the best supports in the game, Nahida. Yes, Nahida. Um, so yeah, as you see here, she has high EM. She has crit rate, crit damage, some okay ER. She doesn't really need ER because her burst is literally cheap. Um, she has dendro damage, of course. Yep, up the wazoo, really. As for weapon, we have a thousand floating dreams. This is her best set. Um, her other um, best uh, catalyst is the magic guide. Yes, you don't believe me. The magic guide is one of her best sets. It's one of her best weapons because the magic guide literally deals more damage if the opponent is affected by Electro and Pyro. And guess what Dendro reacts to? It reacts to those elements. Yeah, literally a three-star weapon is one of our best free-to-play weapons ever. But as for the, well, best weapon in general, A Thousand Floating Dreams. Literally gives her all these buffs. Yep. As for artifact set, Deep Wood Memories, four piece. This is her best set. No doubt about it. Um, as for her other best set, it's Gilded Dreams. But you only run Gilded Dreams if Nahida isn't the main applicator of Dendro. But most likely, um, if you are going to be running Nahida on everything, which is mostly all the time because she is the one of the best Dendro supports in the game. Also, the best Dendro support um, or one of the best Dendro supports. You literally run Deepwood because she's going to be your main Dendro applicator 100%. So yeah, um, gives her Dendro res decrease. Elemental skills and burst. It's really, really good. As for constellations, C2. C2 Nahida um, with support is literally a giant monster. Literally does like a bajillion damage to all enemies. I mean, look at this. She literally eliminates a condition 
off of her because of C1, meaning that you get the maximum buff as long as you bring one of these um, character types on your team. As for C2, literally it makes her a literal nuke of sub DPS uh, potential. Yeah, literally gives her 20% crit rate, 100% crit damage, and also decreased defense on um, any electro related dendro reactions. Yeah, she's just way too good at C2. At C2, she literally becomes cemented like one of the best uh, supports in the entire game because of it. And as for talent 6, 10, 10, I leveled these up um, first, of course, to level 10 crowned. And that's because, of course, she is a support. Um, I don't really use her as a main DPS unless I have to. So that is why her normal attack is at level 6. I'm not going to level up any further. So yeah. But anyways, there is Nahida, um, the best central character in the game. Fight me. <laughs> As for the next character, we have the best Hydro character in the game. Yep, fight me on that one too. Farida! Farida is the GOAT. The greatest of all time. Um, As you see here, she has high HP. It gets higher, of course, when she is in a double Hydro team. But the reason why she has kind of low HP is because look at this crit rate crit damage. Yeah, I maximized her. Um, as you see there, crit rate, crit damage, ER, yep, ER, um, she also has high, I think she, no, she doesn't have high damage bonus, but look at all that HP, crit rate, crit damage, ER, yep, it's, she's just so good. As for weapon, she has Splendor Tranquil Waters, this is her best weapon, of course. Um, as for her other best weapons, um, she has the Festering Desire, if you do play, uh, um, 1.2, but if you haven't played 1.2, Big rip. <laughs> so yeah, um, if you haven't played 1.2 and you haven't gotten the Festering Desire yet, um, then you can just run the Fishing Pool, which is a pool you get for fishing. Um, you could also run that as well. Um, that's probably her best free-to-play weapon, honestly. It's the Fishing Pool. So yeah, but of course her best weapon, Smunder Trinkle Waters, literally boosts her elemental skill damage, which is what she basically does. As for Artifact Set, Golden Troop. This is her best sub-DPS set. I run her as a sub DPS, literally gives her more elemental skill damage. Yep, no brainer. <laughs> as for constellations, I have her at C2. C2 Farina support and sub DPS is like one of the best in the game. Um, as for sub DPS, you don't have to run constellations for her because she's just gonna be doing damage. But for support Farina, it's a must, and I mean it, a must to give her C2 because look at this. Her C1 literally increases her fanfare limit and also gives her 100 fanfare if she starts the burst. Automatically, by the way. And as for C2, they literally increase her HP um, when your fanfare reaches the limit or above the limit. Yeah, it's really, really good. And also, it gets accelerated. It gets super accelerated. It's super, 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 super good. Yeah, so that means... That all your fanfare stuff and all your points are going to be boosting all of her damage right here. Yeah, you see what I mean? She's just going to become busted. So yeah. Um, as for talents, of course, 10, 10, 6, of course. Because I have to level up her skill and burst because that is her main bread and butter. So yeah. But there is Farida, um, the best Hydro character in the game. Uh, no doubt about it. And as for the last member of the team... We have the doctor himself of Ina, uh, not Inazuma, of Liwe Baishu. <laughs> and also who, also the uh, Hu Tao rival. So yeah. But um, as for Baishu, he hasn't changed that much either. He has 40,000 HP, ER, um, basically the basic things that he gets, really. He's literally just a support. As for weapon, prototype Amber. That, this is the thing I run. Obviously his best weapon is his own event weapon but prototype amber is definitely a good substitute because hp you get elemental burst uh increases energy which we said you can spam more elemental burst you can also heal based off of hp and he skills off of hp it is really really good and it's a craftable weapon too so it's pretty easy to access as for artifact set i have four piece deep wood yes i gave him deep wood um this is because i run him in um nouvellet team where he is literally the only dungeon character in the game um or at least dungeon character in the team so yeah but um 
I was too lazy to swap out sets, so I wanted to showcase that Baiju can work without the set, and he did. So yeah. As for constellations, of course, I have him at C0. He doesn't really need constellations to be good because he's a dendro healer. And as for talent, 667. Yes, I still haven't leveled him up to level max because I don't have the mats for it. So yeah. And that is basically it for um, all of the characters right there. Baiju, great. Um, Dendro character overall, uh, one of the best Dendro supports in the game and also the best Dendro healer in the game because he's one of the, well, only good ones, I guess. The only other close one is Yao Yao. So yeah. And that is it. Yep, that's it for this Spiral Abyss video. So if you guys enjoyed this Spiral Abyss video and if you want to see more content on the channel like this, be sure to leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel. Um, it really does mean a lot if you do support me. Um, it helps me keep me motivated to making more videos for you guys. Helps keep me, me pumped. Um, pumping new content for you guys as well, making more videos, etc, etc. So again, if you do like the video and subscribe to the channel, thank you guys so much for supporting it. It really does mean a lot to me. You guys are amazing. I wouldn't be here without you guys. So again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys so much. And also, for the comments down below, what do you think of the 5.0 Spiral Bus? You think it's easy? You think it's hard? You think that it should be uh, more difficult or you think the difficulty is fine? Let me know in the comments down below. And also, what teams did you guys use for this Spiral Abyss? Also, let me know in the comments down below. It'll be interesting to see what you guys will come up with. And as always, thank you guys for watching this Spiral Abyss video. And I'll see you guys in the next Gotcha video.